wonderful. I love the, the first sound that shows up on my stream is some loud crinkling from the pretzel bag lady uh, over there. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday, which is usually my Let's Play day. And we have this wonderful game, Journey. And I don't think a lot of people really know about Journey unless you were like on Tumblr when it came out because Tumblr loved this game and did a whole bunch of fan art and like talked about it for a while. And I'm here today to play it and talk to you guys about game theory because this game does something that a lot of really great games do and it goes over and above what you expected it to be from the premise and games like Portal where it's just a puzzle game but it's got some really beautiful story also <laughs> you know they go 110 percent every time and for this game they went 110 percent because it was just supposed to be another one of those pretty games with cool physics and the sand moves around and everything's really pretty but it aced it with the whole existential message so we're probably only going to play a little bit of it because I only have half an hour and this game does take about a few hours to get to the end but I'm not planning on speed running. I'm just planning on showing you guys something pretty and walking around and talking about it. So thank you so much for being a part of my stream, you guys. If you're here when later after the fact when this is a video, also you thank you. Right there, you know? What? You your my journey. Thank you for being a part of my journey. Yeah, and totally wrap it up. No, yeah, I, I could have, but I really botched that up. But it's okay, because life is about making mistakes and learning from them. And this game is about making a lot of mistakes and learning from them. And this is us. And, and if I don't talk for some of this, it's just because, like, I want you guys to just enjoy the beautiful soundtrack because this game is really nice. So first off, let's do a little game theory talk. This game starts off with nothing but some controls. It says you can move the controller around 360 degrees uh, because of the access on, or the axis controls that were introduced on the DualShock for PlayStation 3. We are on a PS4, so I mean, like, they still have that. But you can also just use the stick to move the camera around. And then they give you, you know, walk around controls. And that's it. <laughs> really, like, I mean, they give you some controls to look. And to later, when you get your powers and all, but like, the first part of this game is just a little small tutorial, very simple, it's very minimalist, and it's understandable, and I'm already, I'm like, cool, I can move around in the world. It's a very beautiful title, actually, I mean... I don't know too many games that do this. I know some, like Assassin's Creed is really vain and they'll do a whole sequence of stuff before they actually tell you the title of the game. And they do it all like beautiful like cinematics. But this, you just walk up here to this hill and you see that mountain in the distance and you go, I want to go there. I, I, everything about this is beautifully constructed. Those are like huge sandstorm clouds coming off the bottom of that over there in the horizon. And the sun is just hanging and it's illuminating everything with this grand morning of 
light, and we see the whole desert here, and it's massive. It's it expands out beyond past where we can really see, and you, you can't go that way. I mean, we could try, and the game says no. It blows you away. It tells you to keep trying to go on the the path that it wants you to go on. try to go this way, the game says, hey, no, now that's a little too windy, oh, alright, that's a gentle push, it's a gentle wall, it says, no, don't go that way, do what we told you to do, <laughs> and that's okay, it's good game design, because, in a way, that's a very real way of saying, don't go this way, it's too treacherous. <laughs> Instead of what some games do, cough, cough, Skyrim, <laughs> where it literally just hits you up against an invisible barrier and says, you can't go that way, which feels bad. As a gamer, I, I want to know why, and I want, like, legitimate immersive reasons for why I can't go that way. This game does that pretty great. It says, here's a giant desert, but we've crafted a path for you, so follow the path or you will be blown into the sandy storm winds. So, I mean, yeah, that's good game design, I think. <laughs> Honestly. But then again, everybody loves Skyrim, and this game has fallen off into its cult classic history. So, like in a lot of games, you have a mana bar, or whatever, that you use to cast spells, or you have some energy that you use to use abilities. In this game, we have this little scarf, tassel -y thing, that's on the back of our hood. And when it's all charged up like that, we can fly. And these little tapestry things, cloth, that float around, help us fly with that magical energy. In order to harness the power of these little cloths, you, re you just walk up to them. It's really, it's a nice system. It flows really well. It feels like these little things are coming around and everything and it's like they belong with the universe, but they're a resource. You use them to help you get around. It's very simple. So far we have a lot of really beautiful imagery and interesting game mechanics that we're learning about, but as far as I can see, I see all these little markers and they kind of look like old Chinese coins stuck in the ground. But I'm sure all of you think that they look like gravestones. And if you're a nosy little person like me, <laughs> I like to find everything. <coughs> so one of the things they teach you is that you can sing. And it helps illuminate the world. So this tells us that those are, in fact, maybe gravestones for the race of people that we were. But if we keep going, we get to this area. And game mechanics wise, this area operates the same way level select works in pretty much every game that ever existed where you can go to a level of your own choosing by putting in the password or um, by getting uh, to the level and then later when you want to come back to it but you don't want to do everything else you can just go there from a menu or like if you don't play video games for and you were watching my show for some reason <laughs> <laughs> and you want an example, it's like if you were on the DVD menu and you had the scene selection and you 
wanted to go to a certain part of the movie. Each one of these big rooms here is like a level that you can go to. And this game does an amazing job of being like profoundly beautiful and mechanically like easy to navigate and everything and they don't tell you anything with words <laughs> the only things that they show you outright and then never show you again for the rest of the game are your controls that you can move the screen around that you can move yourself around that you can jump and fly as long as you have energy in your little scarf and that you can sing and that it manipulates the world around you <laughs> and that's it that's that's all that they give you Assassin's Creed says that every single one of your buttons does something and then you hold down one of the triggers and all your buttons do something else <laughs> and you have you have to memorize that stuff or they have to tell you but this game they just tell you one time and you know it for the rest of the game everything works and makes sense Even these stories that they show us, they're just pictures. <laughs> and they paint a story, you know, that it makes sense. came, you know, from the people, and it's still been around, obviously, but these people are long gone, all their graves are everywhere, and we're just in this. When you sit down, well, like, if you, um, stand for a long period of time and you don't do anything, or, like, you set your controller down and it doesn't do anything, I think you just sit <laughs> passively, and it's... But yeah, you do like sit down after a while and it's a way that you can tell that like other people, if they're playing with you, are not playing anymore because they're paused or something. Like I think, yep, there you go. <laughs> Just sit right down. And you don't even have, like, arms. You just have the little legs. And your big tassely. And if you see in the distance, this always shows that there's somebody running off. And that's like, once you breach this point, you can, your game will be open to being to play with other people, but it's always random. It just signs you with somebody else who's already in a zone and they just join your zones together. And you don't have to have somebody with you, but it does help always because you can sing to each other and rejuvenate your scarves. And it's such a beautiful like teamwork kind of thing that you don't even realize it, but it forces you to want to like huddle together because you help one another. <laughs> and this whole zone is really cool. Obviously, we can't go beyond that bluff or that one. We're in this zone, and there's sort of a puzzle here. We want to get up there, but there's no way we can fly up there. There's not enough cloth stuff everywhere. Looks like there's a scarf on the ground. Those big scarves? Mm -hmm. These tapestries. Oh, 
Nice. Awesome. So very simple, right away they show us, let's do that all over this area and we'll make a bridge and it'll help us get up there. Cool. And like, you might think that just because of its simplicity that this game might be more oriented towards children. And what I have to say to that is that's quite a foolish assumption. This game is oriented in a way that makes it accessible to everybody, not just kids, but also adults. <laughs> and it's complex, like, story and the things that go on in the story and all around the world that show you what, like, the civilization that once was was like. It's, it's definitely geared towards a more adult crowd that can understand this stuff and absorb it better. And I mean, the company that made this game, the studio, is just called That Game Company. It was an indie studio that showed up in Austin during the interactive festival for South by Southwest. And they showed off this game on the PS3, this, the demo, which was just this level. Once you get past this spot, it, there's nothing else. Um, and then they show you a cool video or whatever of the world, but... I, I played it when it was demoing, and then I told everyone when it came out, go see this game, it's really neat. It has such a cool world to it, you know? And we got it when it came out on the PS3, my dad picked it up. And so I got to play it, but... just, it contains a message that I think is really important, which is that regardless of how history has been, existence, you know, is a cycle of life and death, and that it's about the journey. It's about, it's about the progression through life and making that journey important and memorable to you, immortalizing yourself in a good way so that your memory lives on as a positive thing, even though it is important that we learn from the negative things and don't blot them out, it's just important to remember everything and to do it right rather than to succumb to you know, darkness or something. In this game, the people of the last civilization fought over the resources that they had, these magical floating tapestry scarf things. <laughs> it helped their society flourish, but it also fueled their war machines. So, as we learn, of course, all life continues on and travels as we do across the desert to this mountain that we're going towards. <laughs> that you always see, you always have vision of the mountain, unless you get to the underground portion of the game. But as long as you're up here in the desert, you have sight of your goal. Wow, we went through this area a lot faster than I think I did the first time. Also, 
A really nice thing about this game that I liked the most was that the soundtrack was completely done by a full orchestra. And that it was all composed by one guy just for this game. And it all flows seamlessly with the gameplay. It, the music feels so good just for this game. In, in totality, I give this game a perfect score. And then I like to make the note that while it is short, I don't think it would be better if it was longer. I don't think it would benefit from having more levels really, because I think it's pacing and the way that it supplies you with information is really good for the time that you play it. And you can go back and play it as many times as you want, and I don't feel like it really ever gets dry. I just feel like I don't have to play it that many times. I come back to it every now and then just because it is really calming. There isn't an enemy for a while, anyways. The things that you do fight don't kill you ever, they just take pieces of your scarf away. And you get those pieces back. <laughs> so, ultimately, the the enemy isn't really so much a an enemy as it is a puzzle, where you have to figure out how to get around to them so they don't see you. It's kind of stealthy. Which is funny that that is even a part of this game at all. Santa Monica Studios made this. The same people who made God of War <laughs> made this game. With the help of another smaller group that worked on the other two games that they made. That game company made Flow and Flower, which were just games where you kind of move around in a pretty environment and there's nice music and it's very aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> those those guys and God of War guys team together to make <laughs> this and so every time we look up and we see a star in the sky if you guys remember from earlier in the beginning intro of this we were that star that woke up in the desert And so that's somebody starting their game, or maybe finishing their game, and heading off to the start again. But that's just how this works. This game is an existential journey where you ascend a mountain and become a star. <laughs> and gain some kind of, I don't know, enlightenment. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't pair me with anybody. And the way you move around in the desert is really pleasing to me. I can't imagine really any other better way that they could have done this than flying literal, just flapping your little wings and swirling around through the air as a magical cloth creature. There's all sorts of stuff in this part of the desert, actually, that if you're good and you get to the top of these dunes, you can see well, all the different little pockets where they're hiding stuff in. Oh, and you slide down, like, surf style. Or snowboard, not surf. What am I saying? That big light probably means that somebody else has joined my game, I'm not sure. It's usually what that light means at the bottom of the screen. Nice. 
I always thought those little guys were like little doggies, but they're like, I think they're dolphins because these are supposed to be like sea creatures. Oh yeah, see? That person over there is somebody else playing this game right now. Each one of us has our own little character symbol. His is when he sings and mine is when I sing. And together we can travel across the desert and on our journey together we can help each other solve these little puzzles and find hidden secrets and things like that. But you can't talk to each other and you don't know their name until the very end. And you can go your separate ways or follow each other. I, I don't know why I, I... Sometimes I like to follow people, but then they follow me. And I mean... I don't know. <laughs> it's just kind of a, a magical thing. And I find it funny because... Even this little chirp that you can make... Where you sing and communicate with each other... It's so small and little and and simple that I don't even think it's annoying that if somebody else came in and did that consistently the whole time or they just spam circle, I don't think it'd be that that honestly that annoying like because there's no way to troll each other. It's like the only multiplayer game I've ever played where they randomly pair you with some person that you don't know. And they can't harm you in any way. There's no way to troll them, it's just fun. It's just pure and innocent. They they nailed it. Perfect multiplayer. Maybe he's gonna try to get up here too. Or she. I don't wanna gender the person who I don't know. But. Uh, ultimately, we have to get over there, I think. And there's a few more things in the desert that I want to explore. Oh, see, we can't go this way, it's too windy. And the, the sand. Like, the way the sand moves and is dynamically, like, lit up, it's just so insane. Like, that's all, like, physics particle-y stuff that I can't imagine how they programmed it, but it's so beautiful. They did such a good job with this game. So there's that one. I think there's another hidden temple somewhere. One more hidden thing over here, I think. Uh. They like to hide lots of secrets <laughs> for you to find if you decided to rush this, because you can just rush it and get to the end. Oh, 
there's another person. And there's two more, oh my gosh. Wait, hold on, what's that? Oh, snap. Oh, snap, that was so cool. <laughs> See, little things like that that I really enjoy about this game. To let you just move around and be this floating fish. I'm gonna get to the top of this tower thing, which is the end here for me today. But I hope that you guys have some time to check this game out on your own. If you have a PlayStation, it's still in the store. It's still reasonably cheap, honestly. You don't have to get the collector's edition or whatever. It's just a beautiful game on its own. What are you trying to do, guy? Scarf is so little. you have to jump over there, dude. But it works. Yay, freeing the doggies. Everybody gets a doggie. a pretty game, you guys, and I really hope you have a chance to enjoy it, and I hope you guys enjoy my streams and my broadcasts and stuff, and you know, this is really important to me, I'm gonna get all emotional and cry, so I hope you all have a wonderful day, but I'll see you all around on the flip. Bye.